Miami and Alex Shaw had every Friday here on Radio Havana Cuba, a regular feature, NRHC. Now we have the real story with the real story executive producer, Gerwin Joe. <laughs> Hi, Gerwin Jones here, and welcome to The Real Story. With me today in Radio Vancouver's Studio 6 are radio journalists Lena Valverde and Ed Newman. This last week in Havana, we saw the highly cordial visits of a number of African heads of state. And in today's program, we aim to bring you some background information on the history of the relationship of revolutionary Cuba to many of the nations of the continent of Africa. As all of our listeners know, Ed Mullen, right across the table from me here, has been the host of Radio Havana Cuba's Focus on Africa for many years. And if anybody can get the ball rolling on this topic, he's the guy to do it. Ed, give us some idea of the ongoing strategic importance of Africa economically and politically. Well, thanks, Gerwin. Well, we shouldn't underestimate this. The 51 nations of Africa comprise the second largest continent in the world, with over twice the population of the United States. The value of its oil and oil resources is estimated in the trillions of dollars. Geographically, the Horn of Africa provides easy access by way of the Red Sea to the Middle East, the Ethiopian ports of Assad and Masawa allow access to the Gulf of Aden and the ports of South Yemen. The Red Sea passage to the Suez Canal is of vital importance. The Southeast African states, such as Mozambique and Tanzania, afford access to the Indian Ocean. Lena, you two are no slouch on African affairs. Well, thanks, Gagwin. Uh, you know, in geopolitical terms, most people would agree that Angola's strategic importance in southern Africa is the key attraction. Angola has over 1,000 miles of coastline south of the Congo River, which serves as part of its northern border. This extensive access to the South Atlantic makes the country a significant outlet for iron ore, salmon, and coffee. This in addition to minerals from the Central African nations. How big is Angola? Angola's area is almost one-half million square miles, equal to the size of South Africa. Luanda is the principal port city in the north. Lobito and Benguela are the two major central Angolan port cities. And Namibe is the southern port. Angola's rail connections are a vital part of an Atlantic to Indian Ocean route, bypassing the South African transit system. Major railway lines run eastward from the Atlantic ports to the interior. These lines are important links to nations such as Zimbabwe, Botswana, and Mozambique. And what does Angola produce? Well, Angola's largest income producers continue to be petroleum, diamonds, and coffee, the largest cash crop. Luanda ranks among the richest of sub-Saharan African cities. Angola pumps over $2 billion in oil. It exports over half of that to the United States, with additional oil exports going to Brazil, Western Europe, and Africa. Angola also exported between 1 and 1.5 million carats of diamonds, which is about 10% of its export earnings, coffee, sugar, cotton, and tobacco, while gold, uranium, copper, and bauxite resources have never been fully tapped. Ed, tell us about Cuba's first significant appearance since the revolution. 